new info has been revealed about Star Wars Outlaw, so I thought why not make a video talking about the new details while also giving my overall thoughts on it. So firstly, we were shown one of the villains who is Slero. He ranks quite highly in the underworld and is leading the Zerak Bash, which is a criminal syndicate. He will be hunting down our main character, which is why she wants to go on a huge heist to gain her freedom. She normally does things alone, but definitely needs some help on this mission cause it's of a large scale. That's why we will be picking up some companions like that drippy droid. Other syndicates will also play a part in this game such as the Pikes, the Hut Cartel, Crimson Dawn and the Ashiga clan. Some of these sound familiar don't they? The Crimson Dawn were a huge part of the solo movie so there could be a chance we will see Kira again. The Ashiga clan might not sound so familiar though and that's because it was created specifically for this game. Throughout the game, we will have to form alliances with several syndicates since after all we are sort of like bounty hunters. More details were revealed by Game Informer from a hands-on preview that stated that the reputation system that we will have with the syndicates will range from terrible to excellent. Being in a good relationship with a syndicate will provide some benefits such as them coming to your help in a fight, offering special items and letting you walk freely in their territory. What I also like about this system is that it's been revealed that the way in which you tackle a situation will affect your reputation points. If you go in stealthily, you can avoid losing some of these points as opposed to going in guns a blazing which could hurt your standing with a specific syndicate. It makes you think carefully before taking on some enemies and to evaluate all your options which is something I like. Another thing that could affect your reputation is the info you find about a specific syndicate on various missions. You can choose to give this information to another syndicate to gain more reputation with them while losing the points with the other syndicate that you are ratting out. This system has potential behind it and I can't wait to learn more about this. Another thing that I'm looking forward to in this game is exploring the open world. We will be visiting well-known places such as Tatooine and I'm curious to see how this game tackles it. The team behind this game also mentioned that for one of their cities, they focus on creating a dense city environment with a lot of activities to do rather than it being massive and nothing to do. I hope they manage to create a proper balance here cause Ubisoft has struggled with this in the past. Something that caught my eye though was that there will be a few arcade games, betting areas and sabak tables. I'm always a sucker for mini games as they can be quite interesting and can be a slight detour from your adventuring. Jedi Survivor had a small mini game that was not that bad actually and I hope this game manages to do something more with it as the mini games in Jedi Survivor were a bit of an afterthought. It being something more along the scale of Gwen from The Witcher would be something I wouldn't mind since they have hinted that we will have an in-universe card game in this specific game. There will also be tons of cantinas to explore which is an opportunity to give you jobs and explore the world. I hope they manage to nail the atmosphere with this and so far it looks like we are on the right track. Another interesting thing about exploring the open world is that some areas will be locked until you can unlock new abilities similar to the Jedi games and many action adventure games. I like this mechanic a lot as it encourages you to revisit old places and discover some new things that you could have missed. So yeah, there is a lot of promising things about this game which is why I think it has a decent chance to be good. But at the end of the day, it is a Ubisoft game and they are known to over promise quite a bit. There is already a bit of controversy going around around this game regarding the various versions you can buy because the price gap between the several tiers are quite big. I wasn't so surprised by this because it's standard Ubisoft practice and they are just going to keep going harder at this, especially since a Ubisoft exec has stated that they want more gamers to give in to subscription services instead of owning your games. Because if you look at the prices of the subscription route, it really looks like the right way to go if you can finish the game in less than a month. You get all of the benefits of the highest tier but you might have to resubscribe later down the road for the future DLC. I definitely do not like this approach they are taking and I wish they would just charge us with two versions being a standard version and a digital deluxe edition because I don't like paying for content that has not even been revealed to us yet and it's also not been revealed whether or not this game will have microtransactions. I wouldn't be surprised if they were present though cause this is Ubisoft. The worst thing they did was when they released microtransactions into Assassin's Creed Valhalla after the reviews were released. So yeah, this could be a possibility. 
Another problem is that the physical version will require an internet connection to download it, which kinda sucks as people who want to own a physical version want to bypass downloading via the internet. But most games need the internet connection while downloading to to day one patches. Almost no game gets released nowadays being free or bugs, so I guess this is a way of them being safe or a way of releasing the game earlier to appease shareholders and fixing it later. Another problem, if you can even call it that, is some people People thinking that the main character is not attractive enough for them, but I think this doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Because to me all that matters is the gameplay, the mechanics and how well the story is executed, but that's just my opinion. So yeah, despite some of this not so good news, I think most of what we have been shown so far looks promising, and I'm still looking forward to this game as the worlds we are going to be exploring sound interesting while having some substance to it. But I will still remain cautiously optimistic as I have been burned quite a bit by Ubisoft over the years. and I'm I'm sure many of you have as well. Anyways, what do you guys think of this game so far? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. And with that being said, this has been 2367 Ruben, signing out.